Hello, now we are going to talk about unit testing and um, another thing that is uh, test doubles which is particularly relevant when you do in unit testing and not only unit testing but um, I think it's the start point to understand a little bit why this is relevant. And so, uh, as I told you, basically the testing is a process of uh, divide to conquer, okay, which is the base technique of computer science. And so the, the idea here is, the, um, well, I need to test uh, my system and uh, I don't start testing the complete system. I start testing small parts. And I, if, I, if I get more confident about the correct behavior of these parts, I start in testing the interactions between parts. Why should I do it this way? Because if I start testing the parts together, basically I don't know why it's very difficult then to, to, to debug because basically the, the bug can be because of uh, an internal fault in one of the parts or interactions between parts. So basically you, you follow this process. So you do this that is called unit testing. So unit testing uh, as a definition can be the, the smaller unit can you can test in a system. Of course, the, and now with what is the smaller unit you can test in a system. Basically, it depends on the type of system. If, if it is an object-oriented system, you may say, say that this is the object of the class, okay? And yes, it's true, but have, even you can even test the, the, the methods. And you can say that the, 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 the unit you want to test is the method. Should the method have a, a good behavior? And afterwards, you test the classes, but uh, probably you could, st you could start with, with testing uh, an object. So, you know, what I do as an object is a quizive set of data and behavior. So you have together the, the, the data and the behavior such that the data is consistent because it can only be changed using these, be the, these behaviors, so this set of methods, okay? So we can test methods first, okay? And it looks easy, yes. Uh, actually, you have already started testing and uh, you believe that you are doing unit testing. Yes, in some sense, but uh, not really. Why? You can only do unit testing of a method if the method is self-contained and doesn't invoke, for instance, other methods or uh, it, I, both inside the class, but more relevant because if it is inside the class, you may say that actually the unit is the class, okay? But if it's invoking other methods in other classes, okay? And so the problem is how can we test a class in isolation? Okay, and this is interesting because look, if you try to test object A and object as a reference to B, actually, you may be testing object B as well. So you may say, well, what I need to do is actually I need to test, if I have this um, divide to conquer strategy, I test object B first, and this is my unit testing, and then I test object B. B. But actually, and then I test object A. But then I'm not doing a unit test of object A. I'm doing two things in object A. A, a. a unit test of A and the integration of A and B. And actually, it's what you do most of the time. But you can solve this. You can uh, look at this in a different way. You can try to test A without B. How is this possible? Well, the possible basically is that you can define a double of B. So what you, you do, you're going to do is that you, you test A and you basically plug a double of B, not B itself, because actually you don't have the implementation of B or you don't want to test this. And you plug it into A. And by plugging it into A, what you get, you get basically a test of A where you use something that is not B that basically is just there to behave the way you want. And this is nice, this idea that it behaves the way you want. For instance, this is really nice if you want to test, for instance, uh, difficult, to, difficult situations that are difficult to, to simulate. For instance, suppose that V is a database, okay? And you want to test your code in a situation where you don't can get, you can't, what is the behavior of A when it doesn't, uh, it doesn't get a connection where it tries to connect to B to the database and gets a, uh, it cannot get the connection. 
And the way to test it basically could be, okay, I'm going to disconnect the, the database or something. But that makes no sense, especially if you want to run the tests during the night automatically. But if you have a double of B that when A tries to connect with B says, I'm not available, then you can test the behavior of A in this, in this particular context. Okay, so we'll see that this idea of uh, test doubles are quite, quite relevant when you do the de development and they have a, a huge impact. Okay, so we'll, uh, in another video, I will introduce you to an article that I think is nice to read and nice and uh, relevant to read, and uh, so I, I ask you to read. And but uh, so just a uh, a small summary about uh, wh where these uh, doubles are helpful. So basically first to isolate the units. So I can test A without B. So I can do a really unit test of A. Then you can reduce dependencies between teams. Suppose this is quite uh, relevant. Suppose that you have two teams and basically the teams depends on one team use an interface of another team. But look, you want to have concurrent development and you have this team to implement the system at the same that the other team is implementing the system. Well, you don't want, the first team doesn't want to wait that the second team, team implements their part. So it's nice to use mocks. So you can, oh, sorry, to use test doubles. Mock is a, a, a type of a test double. So you can use a, a test double that basically what does it do? It just it simulates what, something that already doesn't exist, but allows to, to, the two teams to work in parallel. Okay. Another one uh, is to reduce the overhead of testing up uh, to, to, to testing set, setup. For instance, you are doing it now. When you run the test, you, you, you use the database in memory instead of using. So you are using what uh, a, a type of test double that is a in memory database. Okay. And to simulate infrequent uh, situations like uh, the server is down, as why I explained it with the, with the database case. Okay, so what you can see next, I'm going to show you, uh, just introduce you so that you can read it, to a technology that you can use to define doubles. In this particular, is in Spock, okay and is interaction-based testing. So you do interaction-based testing. And what is interaction-based testing, basically? So the idea here is that Spock allows you, for instance, read here, allows you to define a mock of, of a particular class. What does it mean? This object doesn't exist, but it's going to behave the way you want in, in, in your test. So basically, suppose that another object what needs to interact with a subscriber object. But I don't want to test the subscriber object. So I'm going to create a double of it, in this case a mock, such that he has only the behavior I need to, to, to have. So what is the idea? You can define it two ways. The idea is now, suppose that the method that interacts with the subscriber is sent. So when you send something, at the end you verify that the two subscribers received hello messages. Okay, so they do not exist, but you verify that the behavior of send really sends something. Okay, maybe you are seeing that is a nice way to test uh, a system that is going to send an email. So you, you want to send an email, but of course, for tests, you don't want to send emails, okay? So you mock the email server and is it working my code? Yes, you can just verify. When I do something, I verify whether my code actually sends this message, okay? And of course, this is really powerful. I can say that is only one instance of this mocked object. So only one invocation of receive, okay? And you have different cardinality that you can even say that during my test, I want or I want to verify it. So the test to pass should guarantee that this particular receive method is never invoked. Okay? So, and you have several combinations. 
Another thing that is relevant and is interesting, we'll see that you can even have defined whether you specify what are the arguments or not in the, in the invocation. Okay? But what I want you to see here, okay, you, you, you have to read this documentation, is another thing that, that is I want, I, I may describe what is the values that are returned. Okay? So I may say something like this. When this is invoked, I expect to receive an okay. So the object doesn't exist, but what I'm saying is that, okay, it doesn't exist. But when I interact with them, I want to receive an okay because it's important for my test. So my test depends on now I receive an okay and then I, my behavior will uh, depend on that value. So I just create a double of the entities I interact with and I define the particular behavior I should have for them. Okay? And I verify it. Okay? So the best way now to, to see, and this is powerful, so read the documentation, is I've been playing a little bit with our project. And what I, what, what I defined here, I defined these, the, these two methods, test methods, and what I'm testing, I'm create, create course execution methods for tests. So I'm just create course execution. So what I'm testing, I'm just testing the situation where I create a course execution. I'm not testing the service because look, when I'm testing the service, I'm not doing unit testing anymore. I'm, because the, the service is going to invoke sometimes other services and then domain entities. It's not unit testing. To do unit testing, I'm just testing this method. But look, what happens? If you look at the code, when you create a course, okay, when you create a course execution, let me show you here. When you create a course execution, so I'm testing this method, right? When I create a course execution, it does several things. In particular, it interacts with the course. So it receives the course and interacts with the course and interrupts, interacts in two situations to see if, that, if there exists a course with the same acronym, academic term and type. And at the end, it interact, interacts with the course to add the new course execution to the other uh, course. Okay? And my point is, I want to test it with the actually having a course. So what I've done, okay? What I've done is, if you come here, look, so I create my test. So my test is not a GPA test anymore. I'm not interacting with the database. So I don't, um, that's not relevant. And what I have is that I just have this method. The technical course exists and create external course execution. So, but it doesn't exist. So I'm going to mock it. So the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to create a mock, of course. And then, well, but this mock is going to be invoked to see if another course execution with the same information exists. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to predefine this invocation. And what I'm going to say is that when this mock is invoked with this operation, exists course execution, with these arguments, it should return false. It should return false. Look at the course. So I'm saying that, oh sorry, look at the course execution. I'm saying that this is going to return false. Okay? So that an exception is not thrown. Okay? So that's what I'm doing here. And then I do my invocation. And I verify that inside the course execution, everything is okay. You can, and I can even verif verify even something more. I can, I can verify whether at the end of the, in, inside the invocation of the creation of a course execution, I inform the course to add this new course execution. How can I check this? Well, using this. I just say, there's going to be one invocation in the mocked course, of add course execution. And here I'm using another nice thing in, in Spock, say that I don't care about what is the argument. So 
It just need to have one invocation. If I'm going to have two invocations, it will be an error. If there are zero invocations, the test will fail as well. Okay? So that's the way it works. And the last, the second test is a different test where I'm going to test the situation where, where uh, the course exists with the same name. But I don't want, look, if I, use, if I do use mocks, I need to create a course. I need to create a course execution, add the course execution to the course, and then I try to create the course execution of the same name. And I expect the error, but I need to create both. Okay? Here, no. The only thing I need to do is, again, I create a mock of course. I create an exist course execution, and I say that it's going to return true. Now, when I invoke this, what do I get? A true. And then I expect to throw an exception. And I should guarantee, or I'm going to check, I'm going to check that the add course execution doesn't occur. So zero. And now I can run both and see that they work very smoothly, very nicely. Yes? Well, in software, these things look uh, great. And now you say, I'm going to use mocks forever. Well, wait to the last video and see the trade-offs of using mocks or not using mocks. Okay? But these two tests passed. And we are happy with it. Okay. See you for the next video. Bye.